Welcome in Hokie Nation to this edition of TSL Today. We record on Friday, February 17th, 2023 from the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center in Blacksburg, Virginia. And we got a great show coming up for you today. Men's and Women's Hoots with David Cunningham and Wrestling with Jack Brizendine. All that and much more coming up on this edition of TSL Today. And it starts right now. We welcome you back to this edition of TSL Today. Again, we're recording on Friday, February 17th, 2023 from the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center in Blacksburg, Virginia. Let's meet the crew on set today. Across the way, David Cunningham, our managing editor. Jack Brizanine is going to join us. Right now he's in the fourth chair. There we go. Yep, he's going to join us to talk wrestling later on. And Kyle Marshak is today's best podcast producer in the land. Behind the scenes, this edition of TSL Today is sponsored by Triumph NIL. Triumph Recruit, Retain, Reward. We appreciate Triumph NIL's support of TSL Today. Well, David, let's get right into things. Let's start with Virginia Tech women's basketball. Huge win over Duke last night. 61-45. Very impressive performance by the Hokies inside Castle Coliseum. It, the funniest thing was that score makes it feel a lot closer than it was. Yeah, Virginia Tech held Duke to 14 first half points. Like, try and wrap your head around that. Duke only had one field goal in the second quarter. Tech's defense was stifling from the get-go. Duke head coach Carol Austin said the Hokies just stunned Duke right out of the gate. Um Duke scored the first basket of the game. Tech scored on its first possession. So it was two all, and then Tech ran away with it from there. And Tech basically controlled every facet of the game. Rebounded the ball well. I think final rebounding margin was 41-27. to The Hokies didn't shoot great. I mean, they only shot 40%, and they only attempted 10 threes. They made five of them. They usually make about eight per game. Um, but the offensive spacing was... Worked really, really well. Tech adjusted and tweaked some things, which we can talk about in a sec from the first Duke game. And I think the most important thing was Tech was connected defensively. It was a salty defense, just stifling. Duke could never really get anything going, never got into a rhythm. Um, Cheyenne Day Wilson, who had 17 that first matchup, Tech used a little bit different strategy um, on her specifically, and, and they really limited her production. So overall, a, a really, really big win. That's back-to-back-to-back ranked wins, all by 10-plus points, five in a row for the Hokies, they're in the running and, you know, kind of control their own destiny in terms of ACC seedings um, for the ACC tournament, potentially the regular season title. Um, they're currently in third, one game behind Notre Dame and, and Duke, who are 12-3 and three over, overall in the conference. Um, and they're on track right now. I mean, they keep winning like this. There's, I mean, at this point, I think there's almost no doubt that they're going to be yeah. hosting an NCAA tournament first and second round. Well, you mentioned it, Tech's in the midst of that five-game stretch in which they played five ranked opponents, and they're 3-0 and so far. And like we mentioned, they made this one look easy. We talked about it. It was a 16-point game, but Tech led by as much as 27 points, and 16 was the closest the margin was since the first quarter. Yeah, it, would, it wasn't really close. Um Tech's de- again, Tech's offense, it wasn't like Tech's offense was phenomenal. Um, but but Tech's defense, Day Wilson was so productive in that first meeting in Cameron Indoor where Tech's offense really could not get anything going, and Tech's defense was kind of just there, kept Tech in the game for a while. This time it was the opposite. Tech's defense was phenomenal, and Tech's offense was better than average, but still was not perfect it, it wasn't the best offensive outing but it didn't need to be because that's how good the defense was I thought it was really interesting how Tech used Taylor Soul and Kayla King a little bit more length than Georgia Amor to guard Day Wilson I think that frustrated her a little bit um, and then offensively I thought the key to the game was Virginia Tech's adjustments from that first game Elizabeth Kitley and Georgia Amor were were a combined 3 of 21 with 11 points mm-hmm. in that first meeting in Durham They scored 40 on Thursday night. They were both 8 of 18. They were phenomenal together. And Kenny Brooks mentioned it after the game that they spent pretty much all of Tuesday coming up with new wrinkles and adjusting and and, and new tweaks to the offense where they didn't want Duke to front Elizabeth Kitley and they 
they didn't want them to rough her up and be super physical under the basket. So what Tech did was they moved Kitley around and got Kitley different looks away from the basket, kind of isolated her one-on-one, gave her looks that she was comfortable with, but that were different than before. Kitley said they spent all day on Tuesday working on that, and it paid off, and Along, along with those wrinkles, Georgia Amor got some different looks, similar to the ones before, but off different actions than previous, and she hit four three-pointers. So whatever Tech did specifically, it worked offensively, even though the Hokies only shot 40%, you know, and it, their points per possession was right a, around one, their defense was electric and, and really set the tone and all over. I mean, from start to finish, Virginia Tech dominated, and it wasn't close. And that's a third straight, you know, 10-plus point win over a ranked opponent. And, you know, one of those was on the road, two of those are at home, and they're all teams that are really, really good. Well, you mentioned it. Both you and Jack were down at Cameron Indoor Stadium for the first meeting between the two. Liz Kitley, four points. Georgia Amor, seven. Last night, both scored 20 and Taylor Soul with 11. Tech went, like you said, 40% from the field, 50% from three. And you mentioned it, quite honestly, put together one of their better defensive performances in quite some time. Duke just 34% from the field and 30%. Or, I'm sorry, 34% from the field and 30% from three. Yeah, Tech's points per possession defensively. I'm going to pull this up. I texted this to Evan Hughes, obviously the voice of the Hokie, uh, Hokies women's basketball last night. And of course he was on his way down to Charleston ahead of uh, big baseball weekend. Um, Tech's defensive points per possession. So Duke offensive points per possession on Thursday night, 0.68. That's the fifth lowest number this season for Virginia Tech on defense. The other four, the top four, USC Upstate, Longwood, Mount St. Mary's, and USC Asheville. Mm-hmm. Tech's Tech's defensive performance was on par with really, really bad teams that the Hokies played back in November and December. Yet, they're playing a really good team in Duke. And and yes, Duke doesn't necessarily have the offensive firepower that, that some other teams in the ACC do. It's a little bit more difficult to stop a team like Notre Dame, I would say, or Louisville. But Duke is good. Duke's a top 10 team in the country for a reason, and Tech Blew them out of the water, and it wasn't really. That's why I said it wasn't really close. Mm-hmm. The Hokies controlled the game from start to finish. Uh, Georgia Amor controlling the pace. Duke pressed a lot. Duke pressed a lot in Cameron Indoor Stadium, but Tech did not handle it well. When Tech Tech had to break the press last night, did a really good job handling it. Taylor Soul picked up a little bit of the slack. Kayana Trailer picked up a little bit of the slack. It was a team effort across the board, even though, you know, Kayla King, DeAsia Gregg, and, and Kayana Trailer really only combined for 10 points. Um, they didn't need to do too much because Soul and Amor and Kitley were all just rolling. And, um, you know, Kenny Brooks said afterwards, they didn't want Georgia Amor to have to basically handle the ball for 40 minutes. She didn't have to because Tech... The game plan went the right way, and honestly, from start to finish, it was a fantastic performance. Really, really good crowd. That's about all you can ask for on a Thursday night in Castle Coliseum ahead of a uh, you know, pretty big weekend. And, and here's the thing. you know, Kenny Brooks said they're playing postseason basketball right now. Past couple games have been against teams that are postseason caliber. They got NC State coming into Castle on Sunday. ESPN 2 game, then they got North Carolina next week on the road. That's another postseason game, if that's what you want to call it. Then you've got the ACC tournament. So this team is playing at a very, very high level right now. That's the other thing, too. Not only is Virginia Tech a high-level team, they're hitting their strides at the right time, too. Yeah. That's all you can ask for. Only three points for Duke in the second quarter. The score at halftime was 33 to 14. All right, so Virginia Tech right now would be the three seed in Greensboro, a game back of Duke and Notre Dame, like you mentioned. What are the chances the Hokies can win the regular season? You got to win out. Okay. I, I, th- I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I don't have Duke and Nor- Notre Dame schedules right in front of me. I assume Duke has to play Carolina still again. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is this league is so good that you can't expect other teams to slip up, right? The ACC is going to eat itself alive, but teams like Duke and Notre Dame are excellent and Virginia Tech I think to have a chance Virginia Tech could to be fair win a share of the regular season title and I think that's possible winning outright would be a little bit more difficult because Tech owns Tech would own the tiebreaker uh 
Well, Tech does not own the head-to-head tiebreaker against Notre Dame because mm-hmm. Tech lost. And if it came down to Duke, Tech probably w- I would have to think about what Duke did against Notre Dame. I believe Duke beat Notre Dame. So Duke, if it came down to a tie, they did. They did. if it came down to a tiebreaker, Duke in theory would hold the head-to-head or hold the tiebreaker over Virginia Tech due to its win over Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. So. There's a little bit of uh, it's get, it gets tough, but I do think that Tech could technically clinch, you know, a share of the ACC title at least. You got to win out. You got NC State, North Carolina, and then a, a pretty poor Georgia Tech team over the next couple of days. Final home game in Castle Coliseum this season, regular season, of course, mm-hmm. yeah. on, on Sunday. But I mean, this Hokie team is rolling. I think that's all you can ask for right now, and I think they've got a really good chance to 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 have an opportunity to do something historic in the ACC if they play well down the stretch. So Duke finishes up in Charlottesville against Virginia and then at home against NC State and North Carolina. So that's no a, gimmies, that's, but... That's a, that's a treacherous yep, schedule. They, I could still see them going 3-0, though. I really uh, could. Yeah. And then Notre Dame finishes up. Let's see. They finish up at Pitt with Georgia Tech at home and at Louisville. So, yeah, I, I think you could, you could potentially see... I could see a likely scenario where... Virginia Tech and Notre Dame finish tied, and Duke is like a game behind, like yeah, one more loss. Um, and Notre Dame would end up being the number one seed, but Tech would technically win a share of the regular ACC regular season title. But still, man, I mean, you're putting yourself in good position. That kind of just talks about how good the league is. But, I mean, as of now, the Hokies, I think the more important thing is that the Hokies are in, like it's not really a question at this point, Virginia Tech, unless Virginia Tech does something Lose to Georgia Tech. Horrendous. Well, unless Virginia Tech like loses out, yeah, true. I th- At this point, yeah, yeah, I think Virginia Tech's going to host an NCAA tournament first and second round game, which is going to be electric. Speaking of what's next for Virginia Tech, we hit on it. NC State and Virginia Tech on Sunday, four o'clock on ESPN two, inside Castle Coliseum. The Wolfpack coming unranked, but it's still one of the premier matchups of the ACC regular season. What catches your eye about this matchup? Well, you and I were there mm-hmm. in Raleigh. Um, the three of us, we like road trips down to, to, the, to, <laughs> to the triangle. To the triangle, yeah. Um, I, it, it's interesting. NC State's playing a little bit better. Um, I tell you what, Wes Moore. I thought that was the most dejected I'd ever seen a head coach after a, a loss. I'm sure you would probably say the same. Yeah. NC State did not play well in that first meeting, um, and now they got to come to Blacksburg. Like, like this is going to be a, a, a not an easy game for NC State. Um, I think the Hokies are are in the right spot. I tell you what, the biggest thing has been the Hokies getting out to early jumps, right? The last three games, NC State, Florida State, Duke, Virginia Tech started out early. Brooke Wyckoff in Florida State called a timeout 47 seconds into the game the other night, right? Carol Lawson didn't need to do it right away, but she did it eventually because Tech just came out and basically swarmed the other team. And if Virginia Tech continues to come out of the gate like that, and and it, Tech is being very steady, right? Not forcing anything. Just taking its time and, and picking its moments. And that's what you need if you're the Hokies. They've played really, really well so far. And I think... I think they're going to play play really well, you know, in front of a really good home crowd on on Sunday against NC State Senior Day and everything. Mm-hmm. Um it, it should be a good one, especially on ESPN2. NC State coming off of a 77-66 win over North Carolina last night in Raleigh after losing 3 of its last 4 before that. You mentioned it Tech won the first meeting between the two, 73-61 inside Reynolds Coliseum. We both were there. You talked about the fast start. That night Virginia Tech got off to a 13 to 2 start and since then Two fast starts as well against Florida State and uh, Duke last night. What does Virginia Tech have to replicate from that night in Raleigh and carry over to take down the Wolfpack for the second time? Uh, get the ball inside. Um, I think, obviously, AC Player of the Year and All-American Elizabeth Kitley is great. Um, but the way Tech adjusted last night against Duke, I thought, was was pretty impressive considering that it's really hard to reinvent yourself in the middle of a season and what Tech did um, was a bit different uh, than it had done all season, right? Drawing Kitley out 15, 20 feet away from the basket and essentially putting her in a one-on-one situation. She can make that shot, but she hasn't really taken it all year. And it kind of goes to show you how smart and how quickly players like that pick things up. I, I think 
putting Kitley in the right positions and making sure everybody else is in a right in the right place to play off of her, I think that's the most important thing because NC State could not handle Kitley last time. Yeah. Um, the Bigs just got in foul trouble mm-hmm. and got in foul trouble early. I, I think the Hokies have a big advantage. Uh, I think Georgia Amor is going to have to be good again, but she has been, and she's playing like she's an AC first team, you know, all ACC first team performer. Um, in my opinion, she's been probably the best or second best point guard in the ACC behind only Olivia Miles, maybe you could say. Probably so. Um, she's fantastic. And and Virginia Tech is clicking at the right moment. Taylor soul has been good. Kayla King, Kayana Trailer, Deja Greg, everybody's been good. Everybody's chipping in, doing their part. I think the Hokies just need to replicate kind of that team performance. That night, Amor with 27, Kitley with 25. Hokies were 49% from the field. 47% from three, 12 of 13 from the free throw line, and they out-rebounded the Wolfpack with ease at a 42-24 advantage. Hokies looking for another big-time victory against NC State this Sunday at 4 p.m. on ESPN2. That'll do it for our first segment. Coming up on TSL today, in the next segment, David and I will talk tech men's hoops, and then Jack Bruce and I will come on to talk tech wrestling. All that and much more coming up on TSL today. Thanks for joining us.